So now, now I am in uh, Chicago's O'Hare Airport, getting ready to. Uh, oh, my hair is terrible. Getting ready to fly to Ohio. Uh, what's this little hair doing here? That's terrible. Eh, whatever. Um, getting ready to fly to Ohio, Miami Valley tonight. Zeppelin B is racing in race ten, number six. If you're watching this and you had no idea, you missed it because it's Monday now. I taped this on Saturday. I'd love to tell you how he did. I hope he does good. Uh, he's got a good class, <clears throat> good post and post six. Hopefully we can snap him out of there and get a good trip and uh, get some money, get paid. So we went through all the racehorses tonight, uh, so far back in Toronto. We went through all the racehorses and how they did this week and what I thought of them. And uh, Now obviously we have the movers of the week, horses to watch. Now last week it was the horse to watch. We have five of them this week. Well, one. One in particular. One in particular. But all these lists, they changed this week because we trained some of them at Mohawk. They trained good. Um, we trained them again today before I left on my excursion here to, uh, to Ohio. We, uh, we trained all the horses and um, some trained really, really... Actually, nobody trained bad. Nobody I went with anyway. Uh, but some trained really good. So... In regards to Mohawk, I got a real good look at some horses going faster miles this week. Horses like King of the Ball, Maintenance Man, they didn't go. Uh, White Tiger, I didn't take them. We talked about this. I wanted to take my time with some of these horses that um, are doing all the work they need to do and uh, really try to cheat away some time in case they are good enough to race at the end of the year. We got a good handle on, uh, on keeping them fresh. So uh, those horses didn't go. So in regards, and, and the only fair thing is they slid down the list a little bit because some horses have been working really hard and they're going to move up the list. That's only fair. So we'll go with the top five movers of the week. This list changed quite a bit last week. Now last week, I don't like to have the same horses on the movers list. It's pretty hard to do. Um, so it will move anyway, this list. But uh, some big, big changes. So just waiting for my flight. So top five movers. Number five, Be My Delight. Be My Delight uh, looked very, very good this week. We've said this time and time again throughout the winter. We've gone easy with Be My Delight and Stonebridge Loyal, a couple other horses where uh, uh, Ivanka, where their knees are a little soft and you'll train them hard and then the next day they'll be a little stiff on them. We're well aware of that. We're very cognitive of that. And for that reason and that reason alone, we take our time. Take our time and uh, pick our spots. Now's the time we start pushing a little bit. So uh, we cut Be My Delight loose a little bit this week. Now, I should say that Wednesday they trained her and they said, ah, she was okay. She was okay. So Thursday, I want to see what okay looked like. I figured, you know, I'll go out and jog her around, sprint her a little bit, see if I can see any of these holes or any of the things that people aren't, aren't very enthused about. Um, I went out and jogged her around four laps with a jog cart. And uh, she seemed fine to me. You know, no issues that I could see. I turned her one quarter and 30 and two with her in the jog cart. Just one quarter. Never put a step in. Never grabbed a line. It was absolutely perfect. So, I mean, there's no point coming in and arguing with the person that tried to tell you they're doing their job and they're trying to help out. And, um, you know, maybe there was something bothering her on Wednesday that wasn't bothering her on Thursday. I don't know. but. There's nothing bothering her when I went with her, and uh, we trained her a slow mile today. She was good again, so Be My Delight looked fantastic on Friday. On uh, Thursday, when I went with her, I thought she looked great. Today, on Saturday, I did not go with her, but the report I got was that she was really good today. So Be My Delight, easily number five. She's been hovering around. She's been a good little filly all winter. Uh, Well-bred, beautiful gait, moves quick like a cat. You know, it's one of these horses where she's going to be what she can be. You know, whatever God gave her to work with, she works with every bit of it, and um, we'll see. We'll see how uh, see how she makes out. Number four, cruising with Angus. Now, cruising with Angus. Um, it's the colt that was been on the right line all winter. Uh, didn't often run. I don't think I've seen him make a break in a long time. But would always be on the right line, a little rolly in the turns. Um, we made a few little shoeing adjustments with this colt this week, and one that I thought would really help him, and it did. It helped him quite a bit. He was better, much, much better. I'd say 95% today, not on that line that much at all. Really trotted hard through the turns and looked good. So easily cruising and Angus slides into that four spot in the movers this week. Uh, as a colt has been doing his work hard all winter and deserves to be on this list. Number three, this is a filly that I mentioned last week. 
and I think you're going to hear a lot from her in the near future, and that's Twinsburg. Uh, she's one of these horses where just come out of nowhere. You know, I, I wasn't really struck on her attitude. She had a nice gait, but didn't use it the way I would like to see her use it. Just really didn't do a whole lot right all winter and into the spring, and just over the last three weeks exploded forward and really, really looked good the other day. Caught me off guard uh, training at Mohawk on Wednesday. She came flying on the end of it. We went a mile in 212 in the, in the jog cart at Mohawk on Wednesday. She come flying late and just, got, just almost got me with autumn wings. Now, I could have went lots more with autumn wings, but at that point late in the stretch, you've shut them down, you're letting them relax. Uh, I like to start them back up right before the wire, and, and this horse was coming like a freight train at the wire, and uh, Twinsburg looked really, really good. I saw her on the track today again, and she looked great again today. So nice to see those horses, you know, turn the corner and start doing their work properly. And this is a filly that absolutely <clears throat> has impressed me over the last two weeks. Now, two weeks over a seven-month period is, isn't all that, to be, all that much to be impressed about, but two weeks right before the stakes start. Uh, in, in five or six weeks is something to be impressed about. So good for Twinsburg, uh, good for Brock. He owns a filly, she's a nice filly. So um, really happy to see her. Uh, yes, Mark Treffy, uh, the butler did it. Ended up on a list this week. What was this list? The movers of the week. Trained a mile and 210 in the race bike on Wednesday at Mohawk. Looked really, really good. I don't know if they put the clip of them training up on Facebook. We have that clip somewhere. I think Kirby has it. Maybe we'll ask him to put it up. But uh, Butler did it, did it all, uh, whacked it out, did all the own work, all the work himself, and finished up really strong last half and three, last quarter and 30 in a bit. Looked good, so Butler did it. Deserves to be on the movers list. Now, this one's going to shock you because it shocked the hell out of me. The number one mover of the week is Dancing on My Own. Now, this filly has been lazy. Very, very, very lazy. Now, you see Heart 8 starting to come alive. She came alive the last three weeks, and I was really just hoping that this filly would do the same thing and I hadn't seen it yet, you know, still lazy. Goes out of the barn on her hind legs playing and going on, but when you go to train her, it's just a lazy as hell. So uh, about two weeks ago we treated her for Baycott, we treated her with Baycott's for EPM. And I, I'm not a big, I'm not a big, uh, oh, you know, she got EPM uh, guy. We did treat her for EPM, she did get better. And we treated her again. And uh, Danny went with her the other day at Mohawk. Man, oh man, she did make a little break leaving. She was acting up, and her hobbles are really long at Mohawk, and she made a little break, and I was pissed off, and she ran. I said, look at this thing, she's gonna make another break. She made a break, and doesn't usually run, but made a break, and I, I thought she was out of it. And we ended up going with uh, our three horses, ended up going with Carl Jameson's three horses, so there was six of us in a set at Mohawk. And I ended up on the front getting out of the last turn with Casanova's Jewel, and this filly come like a freight train down the lane. She was flying. Um, her, I didn't get to see uh, who won it, but Carl and I didn't win the name of Carl and uh, Carl and uh, Danny finished up together, and she looked really, really, really good. And I asked Danny after, you know, is that an apparition? You know, did I not? Did that Philly just not do it? I think she did. He said she was awesome. He said I chirped her again around the last turn. I'm past you and gone. Which I don't know about that, but um, she looked legit. So I'm trying to look at all the horses. I trained a horse today that trained better than anybody did this week. Maybe this year, but um, I put him on the horses to watch list because he's been on the top ten all year. Kind of slid into obscurity. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you who it is just yet, but um, he, he impressed the hell out of me today. And if it wasn't for him, dancing on my own would have easily. She got the number one mover of the week because she is come out of nowhere. Uh, I'm glad to see her doing her work now and looked fantastic doing it. Here's a well-bred filly we give fifty-five thousand for at the sale really just waiting, you know, chewing on her nails, waiting for this filly to come forward, and she did, she finally did, and I hope she builds from, from here on in, I hope she builds on that, and there's never reason to believe she will, so, um, so Dancing Unknown got the number one mover of the week. Now, under the horses of the watch, to watch, some of these horses dropped off, um, some of these horses dropped off uh, the top ten list, only because there was so much movement on that list, um, these five horses were worth mentioning. Usually last week we had one horse. All five of these horses deserve mentioning from what they did this week. So, horses to watch. Uh, number five, West 52nd. I trained West 52nd today by himself, 214. As you recall, a lot of you noticed he was running in last week and made a break at the wire. Uh, we changed his equipment again. He's still really bully. Man, oh man, he's a powerhouse. So, he trained great today. Trained him in 214 by himself, and he looked awesome today. Really, really happy with him. Bay Jewel, I've been talking about this filly all, well, forever, all year. Um, 
I couldn't find her onto the top 10 list, but she's been done more than enough to get there. Uh, trained Austin the other day at Mohawk Mile in 211. Uh, looked really, really good. Really, really impressed with what I'm seeing at a Bay Jewel. I think she needs about five or six more good miles, and you really start to see her muscle up into the big beast that I think she'll become. But she was awesome. Uh, awesome this week at Mohawk. And again, good today. Uh, they went with her today. I didn't go with her today. I saw them go out. I was supposed to go with her. I said, just go a mile with her. Just go an easy mile. Wherever she wants to go. I, I didn't ask after. I watched her train. She looked great. I would say they probably went a mile in 25, 30 with her. Looked great. Candy Mac. Candy Mac. I switched out a pacer for, for Candy Mac in a pacing set the other day. I just I had to make a, a little change on the fly at Mohawk. So Candy Mac ended up with two pacers and uh, finished up right behind us. Mile in 2.11, last half and three, last corner 30 seconds. It looked really, really, really good. I love watching Candy Mac go. Here's a horse by an obscure sire. I don't think he's ever made a break, and if he does, it was an extremely rare occasion. And uh, his, gets his head down and his head cocked it a little bit. And just all trot, all trot. And uh, I love this little horse, and, and he's not little, he's big now. And I uh, love watching him work, and I love what I saw today. Number two, easily not an angel. So I mentioned last week that Mario Bergeron trained this filly, and he said to me, hey, she doesn't need those hobbles and shin boots and bell boots. She's not going to need them anymore. And, you know, when we wear them on her for three months, you're, you just put them on her, you know. We didn't today. I took them off her, and Mario was bang on. Uh, she trained great on Wednesday. I didn't take them off today. Took them off her Wednesday. Trained her in 211 at Mohawk easily uh, with no hobbles on. First time in three months, no hobbles. Just like she never had them on her life. She's perfect. Mile in 211. I turned her and went a mile with her today. Now, the other day she was lazy, so we took the hood off her today. The hood's going back on her. She was a little aggressive today. I got her backed up a mile in 18. Probably wanted to go a mile in 25, and she was just a little too sharp today for me. So for Angie Coleman and uh, her boyfriend Rob and the people in Illinois, not an angel's coming. She's going to be a nice filly out in Illinois, I believe. Number one mover of the week. Easily could have made the top ten. Might be up near the top next week. Oh, so pine. I'm waiting for this colt. I rarely get to go with him because he's good gated. Jumped on his foot, the poor bastard, last week, right before, like, first trip, before we got to go two trips with him. So he was pretty sore on that foot. He looked like a wounded soldier out there training. And uh, I took him out today and cut him loose. And man, oh, man, was he trotting. I went a mile in 2.12 at the farm in the jog cart, last half and three. I might have come 29-4, 29-3 with him in the chalk cart. He was flying around the last turn. I love watching this horse go. He's just all power. Big, powerful colt. And he's always been over on the right shaft a bit. And I said, John, Johnny was actually the one who said it. He came, in, he came in and I said, gee, she's over on that left shaft a little bit, but he's trotting hard. I said, geez, he might have a little bit of a curb on his left time. Just a tiny, tiny one. Um, so we're going to clip it, blister it, cool it out. And if he looks better, we'll cryo it before he qualifies. But he looks awesome. Oh, so pine. Fastest horse in the barn now. Um, was always in the top ten. Just kind of slid off it a little bit uh, for no particular reason. But uh, he's going to find himself back on it pretty quick. Easily the best, biggest horse to watch. So between him and Dancing on My Own, two of the biggest trips I saw all week. Two of the biggest easily movers of the week. Oh, so Pine was always a good horse, so I don't call him a mover. I mean, dancing on my own, moved out of, you know, realistically, if we had a top 54, 1 through 54, she weighed in somewhere around 35, 40 for the longest time and just bounced right up into the top 15 easy this week. Really, really impressed with dancing on my own. And Oh, so Pine, not shocked, but happy. Man, oh, man, that thing can trot. Anyway, that's the top five movers of the week. I gave you five horses to watch this week that are definitely on their way forward. Now we'll hit the top ten. Now this, this list moved a little bit also. We had a new top horse of the week. The top four or five moved, as I said. We didn't get a chance to really uh, cut um, Maintenance Man, White Tiger, and King of the Ball loose this week. So I, I, in all fairness, I just let them slide down the list a little bit. I didn't see enough to leave them in the top five positions. Uh, well, one of them did. No, two of them did. But um, this top 10, as we said, is, is fluid, but tough. These are good horses. Um, number 10, Stonebridge Simba. Trained him at Mohawk the other day. Ryan Holiday went when he made a little tiny break at Mohawk, but then recovered well and, and trained well after that. Today I went with him, made a tiny break on me. 
but looked tremendously good right up until he made that break. I'd mentioned he didn't really deserve to be off this list. We could have let also pine on it, but um, Stonebridge Chimba looked great today. And the thing I like about him is that if you watch us training, usually where horses will make a break is in that far turn over by the road, uh, over by the road, and the, the turn um, furthest away from the road, he usually trains, uh, they usually roar right through that turn, and the places they make mistakes is one by the road. This horse blows right through the one by the road, and, and you got to watch him in the other turn. I'm not really sure why, to be honest. Um, well, we'll get to the bottom of it. It's not, certainly not a lameness issue. He was awesome today, this Colt. Really, really happy with what I saw. Trained well. I'll throw the break out the window because I dared him to make a break, and he did. So uh, we're going to work on that turn and work on him this week. See if we can't get him perfect because he's very, very close. Number nine, maintenance man. I just let him slide down the list. You know, he hasn't trained hard yet. We haven't really called on him for much yet. But there's a lot of these horses that are working exceedingly hard that deserve to run up the list a little bit. We all know what maintenance man is and what he's all about and how good he is and always been one of our best. And he would have to be atrocious for us to knock him off the top ten. And I think I actually had him up around number four or five. And then I looked and there was a bunch that trained really well this week. And I ah, just let him slide down. Not a big deal. Uh, maintenance man isn't going off the top ten and isn't going anywhere. Looked great again this week. Trained well today. We just haven't asked him for much yet. Uh, he's been in maybe 17 or 18 and probably won't go any faster with him for a little while yet. But maintenance man looked great again today. Number nine, number eight, final answer. I touched on final answer last week. I did exactly what I said I'd do. Took him over to Mohawk on Wednesday and trained a mile in 212, come a half in two, come a quarter, I think 29 and three, 29 and four with this Colt in a, in a training session. And did it easy, easy. Really, really, really turning my head this Colt. He is, uh, it's one of the biggest surprises. You know, you see a horse like dancing on my own, start to put two or three of these weeks together. We'll be talking in the same manner, but um, final answer, wow. Uh, looked awesome. Not shocked now after what I saw last week and how talented he is, I'm not shocked now, but um, really impressed with this Colt the last month. Really, really tremendous, tremendous athlete, if you will. Uh, I just, I didn't see it coming. Um, hey, that's great. We're gonna have uh, enough bad news throughout the year, I'm sure, from time to time. It's great to have some good news, so final answer looked awesome. Number seven, Mo Better. Beat the shit out of them last week, Mo. Um, I did not take him to Mohawk, which I just didn't want to push him too much. Didn't take him to Mohawk this week. And I didn't train him uh, myself today, but I watched him train. He looked good. Looked good, this Colt. I'm not going to ask him for too much. He's a small horse. He did plenty last week. So we just went, let him, uh, pushed him a little bit this week, but didn't really want to uh, drop the hammer, so to speak. So Mo Better looked awesome last week and looks good again uh, today. Number six. Springbridge proud. Didn't take him to Mohawk. Didn't train him hard again today, but I, I keep remembering the mile from last week, and he just keeps going up and up and up. I, I, I don't want to keep dwelling on it, uh, but uh, still ultra impressed with what I watched last Saturday. And just a nice colt. Looks great. Feet are cold. Uh, working on his knees to keep them good. His colt's on the right, uh, going in the right direction. I'm really, really impressed with what I saw. Uh, over the last week with uh, Springbridge Proud. Number five, King of the Ball. Didn't train him today. Blistered his knees. Uh, he was getting on the left line a little bit. And I know what it is. It's just his knees bothering him a little bit. He's just going through a growth spurt. So I um, just took my time with him this week, you know. We um, uh, blistered his knees. Trained him Wednesday. He trained great. Blistered his knees uh, Thursday, Friday, and today. I didn't train him today. I just told him to go out and jog him. Um, so he he shouldn't be in fifth and maintenance man's in ninth. It's too late to change it now. Uh, so King of the Ball stays in fifth though. He's uh, he looks great, sound. Just being just taking her time. If he's getting on the line, something's bothering him. Stop what you're doing and pay attention. It's exactly what we did. You know, push the pause button with him, and he looked great uh, all week. Number four, White Tiger. Uh, White Tiger's been training great. Did not take him to Mohawk. He, this isn't fair. This isn't fair that maintenance man get to drop down to nine and eh, whatever. Maintenance man should be ninth. Maybe King of the Ball should be ninth. I don't know. White Tiger, uh, White Tiger looked good again training all week. Just went slower miles with him. As I said, we're trying to cheat away some time with these horses. I know I could take any of those three that I just mentioned over and go mile in two nine to two eleven with them at Mohawk and they couldn't blow a match out. 
but it's May, first week of May, it's not the end of the world. Um, just take our time, um, not kill time, but just put in those slower miles. Make sure their knees are nice and closed up and, and cooled out. Make sure their feet are cold and they got their feet underneath them and they're, and they're aggressive. I want to I wanna just let them get get themselves back in the game, back in the swing of things, and um, but do it in a quiet way. There's no rush with uh, with a few of these horses. And uh, White Tiger, is, as I said last week, I mean, you know, in hindsight, a fairly bold statement said that I thought he was our best horse. I'm not wavering from that. I, I think he is. But uh, there's some horses coming on right now. Uh, so anyway, White Tiger drives in at number four. Now, top three is different. Number three is our horse that was number one last week, Swandre the Giant. Swandre the Giant trained great at Mohawk, went a mile and 211, come out and trained good again today. Um, but he didn't train better than either of the horses that landed in front of him, and that's the only reason that he isn't third. Trained great, and he did probably enough to land in first, if it wasn't for the two that are ahead of him. Um, uh, Swandre looks fantastic again. He just looks like a good horse. You know, He just does everything that a good horse does. So until I'm proven wrong, he's a good horse. Number two, Time All Houdini. Time All Houdini slipped a bit, made a break last week, took him over to Mohawk and trained him. Uh, trained him this week and trained good, 211. So we were going today. This would seal the deal for me. We're going today and John Downey, so John Downey's a great guy, one of our good clients, and he comes out and goes with the horses sometimes. And I hadn't seen him in a few weeks, so I pull in today and I, I knew it was him as soon as I saw him. He's out in the track going with the horses, which is awesome. So. Um, when we don't have the drone there, I have a list that I, that I want to go with, and then I usually just go out and we'll go out in sets, trotters, pacers, it doesn't matter. We're only going, uh, we're only putting work in, putting time in, as I call it. So um, John goes out with Time of Houdini. The hobbles were a little looser than I thought they needed to be. Uh, I thought he might have trouble with this colt. We jogged around. Who the hell did I have? Oh, I had Simba in there. Uh, I forget who Danny had. I'm not sure yet. It was Danny and I, John. Uh, and maintenance man was in there. Maintenance man was in there too. And um, I said to John, I said, hey, you're going to have to get that colt's attention before you turn him, right? Really? I said, yeah. You're going to have to wake him up and get him on his toes. Otherwise, he'll roll off. He doesn't pay attention. Okay. So he turned him and scored him down a little bit. He was on fire. So we go to Guetta there and John just screams out of there with Houdini right to the front. I'm sitting third. I can't for the life of me think who Danny had. Maybe he was screaming hawk. He was screaming hawk. Um, I'm sitting third and I make a big move at the quarter with, with Simba and I roar to the front when we're up there in like 35, which is a little quicker than we want to do, so I tap the brakes and I could see Houdini kind of climbing up on top of me behind. So we're going to half, we went the quarter in 35 and I hit the brakes a little bit. We're going to half in 12, I'd say 12. John moves him right in the middle of the turn, re-moves to the front. We're over the half in 11. Three quarters in like 146, we're going a mile in 17 or 18. No, we went a mile in like... Is it three quarters, maybe 145. One mile and 16, a bit 17. A quarter in like 31 or 32 seconds. John had a time pulling him up. So old Houdini, he got the hint. He came to play today. He wasn't pulling any punches and looked like a million dollars. He looked fantastic training today with John. Just to say, you know, John, John's an older gentleman. So it's not like he's a kid out there, you know, highlining Houdini. He quite the ride today with Houdini, I'd say. So good for him and good for the horse. Uh, easily number two, could have been number one. I have a special place in my heart for number one. Dance Hall Babe. Dance Hall Babe uh, overcame OCDs, getting taken out of her hawks. I really thought she'd be late getting to the races. It's like she never missed any time at all. I took her over to Mohawk on, uh, took over to Mohawk on Wednesday, trained her in 210. She looked unbelievable. So, uh, and we put an open bridle on her. Remember we were talking about bringing them all over to Mohawk the first time they're there, they don't train good, and the flags and the grandstand, the TV and everything, they see all this and they don't train good? I took it all off her Wednesday. She put an open bridle on her. She could see everything. She was looking around, looking around. I turned her to go her mile with two other horses. We're going lots, as fast as these horses were ready to go pretty much that day, within their comfort level. She never looked at one thing, nothing. Not the shadows, not the pylons. Not the flags, not the racetrack, not the paddock, any other horses jogging around, completely focused. That's not often you see that in a young horse. Not very often you can drop a two-year-old, drop an open bridle on a two-year-old, and that's only the second time she was at Mohawk, and have them go out and do their work, let alone do their work well, let alone do their work fantastic. Top marks. 
to Dance Hall Babe this week. Looked like a million dollars on Wednesday. Looked good again today out there playing around. Just went a mile and 30 probably. 25 or 30, whatever they went with her. Looked great again. Uh, Dance Hall Babe's top marks. Just because of her professionalism and what she can do. And every time you put her in a position where you say, might be a little much for her, she looks awesome. I thought I was going to go a mile in 212 the other day. We ended up going in 210 which I thought was lots, and I knew we were going lots when we go by the 5 eighths pole, and we started to step on the gas a little bit earlier than I thought we would. I thought we were going to go a little much for her, and I, I thought she was going to be a little tired. I moved her right halfway down the lane. She came charging at the wire. So Dance Hall Baby, easily top marks this week, number one horse in the burn. Now, Oso Pine was the number one horse in the burn on Saturday. I can guarantee you that. But number one horse this week. And deservedly so, Dance Hall Babe. So those are the top movers of the week. The top, uh, the horses to keep an eye on for next week. Five of them you can keep an eye on. And the top ten. So when you look, there's 20 singular horses that all were extremely impressive this week. And a whole slew of them underneath that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. So, so it's been a uh, tremendously good week at the stable. Uh, hopefully we have a the uh, carries right into tonight in Miami Valley, but uh, really, really impressed with what I've seen this week out of our Colts. Really getting close, you know, really getting close. Four weeks from qualifiers, six and a half weeks, seven weeks from their first stake race, four weeks for five weeks for the Illinois bread. So big things coming up. Really excited about what I saw today. Gonna get out of the sun, eat the rest of that pizza, and I will see you in a little while for uh, for the rundown of all the babies. Haven't done that yet. I'm going to do that from, from Ohio. So you're going to get two countries, two states today. Updates from all of them. Take care. <laughs>